Hey guys, in this video, what we're going to be doing is actually learning Protopy. And what I'm planning to do is this particular video can just be an overview to gauge whether users are interested in Protopy, prototyping, so on and so forth. I would argue that I've tested out Figma, I've tested out XT, I've tested out Principle, and I've tested out Protopy. And Protopy by far, like I haven't tested out Framer, but Protopy by far has been probably one of the most powerful tools amongst all of those tools even i would argue uh, for ui interactions more powerful than xt because obviously you can't really interact in xt you can create animations and stuff but the interaction is very limited in xt based on my knowledge and my experience so what we're going to be doing here is i'm going to be giving you an overview of what protopy is how you can use it so on and so forth and if that piques your interest definitely like the video let me know in the comments share the video as well and if I get a lot of traction, then I can actually do an ongoing course uh, until we cover some substantial amount of Protopy and basically teaching you even the advanced uh, stuff and technologies or features of Protopy. So without further ado, I'm just going to get started and you can download Protopy from protopy.io and it also has a lot of great resources in terms of learning. You can go to learn, you can go to the Protopy school as well. It has a bunch of tutorials and stuff that you can actually go ahead and figure out. Uh, Protopy obviously is not free. You have to go ahead and buy an individual or a team or any license if you want to go ahead and do that uh, to play around with it. However, they do offer a trial, I think, which is of 30 days. So you can go ahead and explore that and yeah, just get started with it. So. The first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and jump into Protopy. Once you land into Protopy, you obviously walk, go here. You can actually take a product walkthrough as well. That's going to give you an introduction of uh, learning Protopy in a few seconds. And I can just go ahead and do that. So as you can see, it's, it's asking me, hey, add a rectangle layer, rectangle, whatever. And then just, yeah, go ahead and add it. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it. It's going to ask me to select it and then tap the this tab button. I add a move response. I'm going to go ahead and add a move response. It's saying enter the 200 values. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and test your protopy. So now if I click on it, as you can see, it's that's basically the tutorial. That's basically what it wants wanted me to do. And that's how it is, how easy it is to get started with protopy. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to show you some other things that you can see. Obviously, you have the dashboard, you have these things, the files are going to appear here you can see specific features for example like how to make scroll and connect protopy and hardware and stuff you can also have there are a lot of resources about like learning specific features so as an example like how do you go about learning the par parallax scrolling animation so you basically go ahead and open that example and here we have the screen in front of us i can go ahead and i can scroll zoom in or sorry sorry scroll down and as you can see there is a really nice parallax effect going on here and all that's happening here if we actually have a look at it is we have a bunch of triggers that are doing a few things right and that's exactly what's happening we have the scroll thing again uh, things come come and go on this particular thing and you can basically again what i'm saying is you don't have to go and like learn everything here you can if you want to but you have a lot of support here you can go into the support feature as well and then you can again ask for a particular feature request and yeah just contact the community so for starters what we're going to do is we're just going to create an empty file and now that we have an empty file i just want to acquaint you with the with the layout a bit so this is again your preview you can close it you can basically open it anytime you click here i actually just uh, use the command p shortcut to open the preview when i want to command p and then it opens it so i keep it closed by default and then you have let's say a figma type interface i would argue like obviously you have the tools on the left you can go ahead and import from figma xd and sketch right now as of this course you can go ahead and import some media like images video audio camera and then lottie animations as well which is really great so this is pretty awesome because again lottie animations are quite a great source of getting like really awesome animations directly for free and then you obviously have some shapes that you can use as well you have the text layer 
uh, which also contains the input box. So I can go ahead, let me just go ahead and actually drag it. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna drag the input. And as you can see, we have an input. If I just preview it, you can see I can type something in it and you have this thing popping up from the bottom as well. And it's really, really flexible, right? Again, I can go ahead and I can say what the font is gonna be. I can go ahead and define what the placeholder would be. I can also define what the options would be, right? Should, should it be a number? Should it be a password? Like what exactly do I want? Like, and what should happen when I press return? Should it go, like what exactly should happen? And then should it be dark and stuff? So now if I open it, as you can see, we have this panel that's dark. I can press enter, it closes itself. I can go ahead and do stuff. So a lot of features are really built in and baked in. We also have these containers. Again, you can just create a container if you wanna let's say contain things obviously. You can also have a scrolling container basically and then if I create the scrolling container I can have multiple items within it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these items and now if I preview it, as you can see we can scroll quite easily. So that's, yeah, really easy stuff. Similarly with the paging container we can have something like that as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it. So imagine this particular thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a rectangle. Imagine this is a page then this is a page and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these things, Command P. And then as you can see, it's really easy for me to go ahead and swipe these pages. And the interaction is extremely smooth as well. And this is, I think, what Protopy really prizes itself on. Not really just this, but again, the ease of which I can get started with things and the amount of things that exist directly within Protopy. I've also created a video detailing a comparison between the export or sorry the import features from Figma to Protopy and then Figma uh, to Principle and I mean the comparison isn't really made like Protopy is so far ahead. A few other things I'd like to highlight obviously you can preview, you can go ahead and run things, you can view the device, view this particular thing on a device, you can change the size if you want to change the size you can go directly to the top and you can say hey I want to view it on Android or I just want the desktop screen and I can go ahead and change it to a desktop screen and I can create my animations here. Similarly, I can go and I can upload it to the cloud. If I save the file, I can upload it uh, and stuff. So a bunch of things I can do and this is just going to be a test and I can now go ahead and uh, it's preparing to upload. And then as you can see, we have a personal space created here, which is again going to go ahead and launch this thing. So I think that's pretty much it what we're gonna cover. I think we can just cover the animation one more time so people understand. Or maybe I can also cover like some triggers. So here we have some triggers, like we have a tap thing and it's anytime you tap on something, like this is the tab that I created on the component I think. So anytime you basically create a uh, trigger and uh, let me just go ahead and remove the trigger and let's do it again. If you basically select one particular item and then say, hey, I wanna add a trigger. So anytime I tap on it or double tap or touch down, touch up, long press, fling. So there are a lot of interactions here, just really awesome interactions that you can do 3D touch and just you have a lot of things, even voice command, man. I mean, it's pretty insane. Let's just go ahead and do double tap because we didn't cover it. So I'm gonna say when I double tap this thing, it should scale and how much should it scale by like I'm gonna go ahead and say it should scale by let's say 400% or something and let's just go ahead and press uh, command P and if I double tap on it obviously it, it goes ahead and scales by 400% if I want to restart this animation I can press this button or I can just press so I'm just gonna go ahead and press command shift R command shift R also reruns it again similarly if you go ahead and press command p it's going to close the preview if you press command p again it's going to open it so you can do it in both ways so i can say again go ahead and on my double tap expand it and then what i can say is <clears throat> so obviously what you can do is you can not only go ahead and control the thing that you're tapping on but i can go ahead and i can let's say create another rectangle here or i can create another text layer here and say you just you just double tapped something so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to say that the opacity of this particular item can actually be reduced so i'm just going to go ahead and press zero twice so when i pressed zero twice obviously the opacity reduced 
and now I can go obviously I, I should I think scale it a bit as well so 24 pixels is fine and now I'm gonna basically say when I double tap it I want to do something and I want to change the opacity of a particular layer but I don't want the opacity to be changed of the rectangle that I've selected rather the text layer and I want to say that the opacity now should be a hundred percent now let's go ahead and have a look double tap and as you can see this appears as well we can also have this appear after a particular delay we can also increase the time here as to how long this particular thing is going to take i can also add a delay i can say it should appear after one second right so now if i double tap it as you can see this appears after one second after i've double tapped it and this is again just awesome like i can go ahead and i can do a lot of powerful things here right similarly i've increased this double tap animation speed i can also go ahead and change the effect i can say the effect should be bounce double tap as you can see it's happening in a really weird manner similarly elastic let's go ahead and try that out similarly back i mean this is just awesome and i would argue like just go ahead and explore these things i personally think protopie is one of the most powerful prototyping tool out there obviously when, if you want to create the designs you can create them here as well but I would still prefer creating the designs directly within Figma because creating designs is much more powerful there. But then importing them directly into Protopie to actually go ahead and highlight some important interactions, I think Protopie is your choice for that. However, Protopie can be used for a lot of complex animations. However, when it comes to Figma or any other tool, XD, Sketch for that matter, like not sure about Sketch because I haven't tested it in some, in, in some time and the prototyping really sucked uh, in sketch so most of the prototyping that you get in figma is probably sufficient for let's say changing pages and stuff but let's say if you want user input if you want them to interact with things and want really clear crystal animations of a lot of advanced stuff happening like again one thing changing then the other thing and there being delays and specific transitions and stuff along those lines then obviously go ahead and import your file and to protopy and get started with it I'm also going to attach the importing thing that I had within from Figma to Protopie and that comparison between principle and Protopie in my description. So do check that out as well. And if you are interested in any more Protopie videos and you would like to see specific things in Protopie, definitely let me know. I think in the next video, if I don't have a lot of, again, interaction with this particular video or if I don't have comments, I'm just going to go ahead and create one video of animating a really awesome design that my wife created in protopy and just uploading that on dribble as well so we can go through that together as well so that's going to be pretty much it for this video do subscribe to hit the bell icon and i'll see you in the next video take care bye